Hey, it's Aurelius. In this video, I'm going to share 21 Canva tips and ideas to try whether you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, a teacher, a student, or a content creator. I'm sure these tips will help you make the most out of Canva. Timestamps to help you navigate through this video are provided in the description box below, as well as a 30-day trial of Canva Pro. So go check the description box for all that. All right, tip number one is to share your Canva designs as templates. For example, if you've got this daily planner that you want to share with others, but you don't want them to affect your main master copy, then here's how to do it. You simply click on share. Where it says share a link to edit, simply change that to share a link to use as template, then copy the link. I pasted it into my text editor so you can see what it looks like, but this is what you want to share. When someone clicks on your link, they will land on a page like this where they can see a preview of the template and then they can simply click on the use template. That way they're not going to affect your master copy. What you can also do is to sell your Canva template. So with your shopping cart system or whatever system you use to sell your products, you would basically hide or protect this link inside your shopping cart system. So only those who have purchased will get access to your template. The next tip is using Canva as a video editor. When you're in Canva, simply click on the video icon, or if you don't see that, simply search for video from the search bar and then click on video. We're going to start one from a blank video. Go to your upload section and then basically drag and drop any video footage you want to edit. And I've already uploaded mine, it's inside videos. I've got two clips right here that I want to use for this example. To insert it, simply click once, that'll insert it. I'm going to scale this so it actually uses the complete canvas. Canva does allow you to crop and do some basic trimming but hopefully in the future, they will provide more advanced tools. The first thing we can do is to trim it. So we'll look for this scissors option. We'll click it once. We can then drag and cut the part that we don't want. Let's say the first 10 seconds. And at the end, we can also cut it too. Somewhere around there, click on done. To add more clips, all you need to do is to click the plus. Then you click on the next footage in your upload section. I'll scale this again. Repeat the same steps to trim. You can also crop it too. So let's go ahead and crop it somewhere around there. We'll click on done. Now what you can also do is to add a transition in between. In between the clips, you'll see the plus, we'll click that. Then you'll see add transition. Click on that and select from a number of transition effects. I'll select dissolve. Now that that's added, I'll play it from somewhere around here. Play it and you'll see the dissolve effect. And there you have it. Next up, want to make a simple but professional looking YouTube video intro. Well, check this out. I'll hit play. I created this in just a few minutes. It includes text and element effects and animations, as well as background music. I've got a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this YouTube video intro. I'll link it up in a card right here and in the description box below. With Canva, you can also make presentations, but on top of that, you can do talking presentations and record it too. Here's what to do. Simply create a design, search for presentation, select the first option, create your presentation either from scratch or choose one from one of the options. I'll apply this one. Once you're ready to present, all you need to do is hit the ellipsis. And what we're gonna do is select present and record. Click on go to recording studio. You'll see me in the webcam. However, you don't necessarily need to be on camera. You can select audio only. Now that's disappeared or you can enable the camera. So select your devices and once you are ready, click on start recording. That'll give you three seconds. And now it is recording. You will see the little circle bubble effect on the corner. Now presenting, you can add notes as well. Adjust the size. Once you're done, click on end recording. That'll upload to Canva. Canva will then give you a link so that you can share it with your work colleagues, students, or anyone else you wish to send it to. In addition, you can also download the video file and upload it to wherever you want. Did you know you can edit PDF files straight inside Canva? Let's say you've got this PDF guide or ebook, drag and drop any PDF file into your homepage. Now that it's uploaded, all I need to do is just click once and Canva has converted it into an editable Canva design. For example, I could go to this paragraph right here and add any additional notes. Here's the next Canva tip. If you're struggling to come up with colors for your business brand, your logo perhaps, or social media graphics, here's how to go about doing it quickly and easily. 
The first step is to gather some photos of things that you love. So for instance, this is an image of an interior design. So you can also use Pinterest to search for these types of things. But let's say you've already gathered some photos, head back to Canva. We are going to create a design and let's just do a custom design of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Have your image ready and simply drag and drop it or copy and paste it over. Now, don't worry too much about resizing it because all we are going to get or extract from this are the colors. Now, click away so that it's on an area outside of the actual image, such as this blank area right here. At the top, click on background color. Now you'll see the photo colors. So Canva has detected the colors based on the photo. And now you know exactly what colors to use on your social media graphics, on your marketing collateral, on your website, your logo, or whatever it may be that you wanna use these colors for. Next up, wanna learn some amazing Canva text effects? Well, check these out. We've got the frame text effect where you can add any image or photo on the letters, as you can see right here. Then we've got other effects such as the highlight effect, 3D effect, glitch or TikTok effect, the curve text effect, hollow outline, align text effect, and the minimalist text effect. I created a separate tutorial showing you exactly how to achieve each of these text effects, which I'll link up in the card right here and in the description box below. Next up, do you wanna learn how to add that highlight or stroke effect around yourself? Here's an example, and you can do this in Canva. You'll see the white outline or stroke around it, and this makes yourself pop on the image. So this can be used on YouTube thumbnails, which is quite popular. Now here's how to do it. You wanna make sure that you upload an image of yourself, and it could be anything. I've got myself here in front of a green screen, which makes it work a lot easier. So what you'll do is you add it, then you click on edit image, and you use Canva's background remover. The caveat here is that the background remover is only available for Canva Pro users. Again, if you do want a 30 day trial to Canva Pro, I'll link it up in the description box below. With just one click, it'll detect the background so that only you are on the image. Now it's done, I can just increase it a little. With the image still selected, I'll click on edit image. Scroll to the bottom until you see shadows. Now, if you don't see this app right here, look down below where it says you may also like, then you'll just need to enable it. The effect that you want is glow. Nothing seems to be different when you click it. That's because we need to adjust it. So we'll go to the controls. Make sure that our transparency is 100%. Make sure the blur is zero. Change the color to white. That stands out on a darker background. Then you'll increase the size to the maximum or whichever level you want. 40 is the maximum. And now we can just move it where we want add our text and create something like a YouTube thumbnail. By the way, if you enjoyed this video so far, give this video a thumbs up. The next tip is using Canva to create product mockups. For this example, let's say we wanna create a book mockup. Let's search for book cover. Click on the book cover option, select an option, and let's say we like this one going viral. We we'll click that once. Then you'd simply customize and design your book cover. Once you're done, what we're going to do is to download the design as an image. So instead of a PDF, we'll make sure it's a PNG or JPEG. Next, what you're going to wanna do is to add a new page. Grab the image that you just downloaded and we're gonna just drag and drop it straight into this canvas. Scale it so that it fits like so. And now we've got the image in place and you may be a little confused. Why do we have two? Well, the way it works is if you click once, we are going to click on edit image. And at the bottom, you'll see smart mockups. Now, if you don't see this, just scroll down and you'll see it under you may also like. Make sure to enable it and then we can go to smart mockups. If you do it with your original image or design, you won't see the option because there are plenty of layers and it won't detect what is the book cover in this case. So we'll just select the second one that we just added. Click on edit image. Under smart mockups, we'll click on see all. And you've got a range of different mockups from phone to laptops right here, uh, hoodies, t-shirts, things like that. But we'll go over to book covers. I like the isolated one, which is style number six right here. So we'll click that once. Now Canva will convert it into this 3D book cover. Now with this book cover, we can save it and upload it to our website so we can showcase our book. All right, speaking of mockups, something similar is a new thing from Canva called prototypes. What you can use this for is, let's say you've got website design clients, you can showcase your web designs by using any one of these prototypes. Let me show you. If we go to the search bar, we'll search for prototypes. 
you'll see desktop, mobile and tablet prototypes. Let's select desktop prototype. Choose from one of the templates. I'll just select this one right here. Anything that you see can be edited such as the text and the images. And you can show your clients what it will look like on a desktop computer so they can envision it. And hence, that's why it's called a prototype. You can share a link to your prototype by clicking on publish as prototype and we'll open the prototype. And now you've got the prototype. If we had a number of pages or prototypes, we can also scroll through them. You can also create mobile prototypes like this. Another great use of Canva is to check out their planner templates. By searching for planner, you'll find a range of planner templates like these. Here's a monthly budget template. You can see the aesthetics looks pretty nice. This is however a Canva Pro template. There are other templates of course that are available for free Canva users. Planners make great supplements, especially if you got an online course or if you're a coach with students. The next tip and another great supplement are checklists. Searching for checklists, you'll see all these checklist templates. Here's a checklist template. You can modify anything you see here, including extra boxes. Let's say you want an extra checkbox. We'll go copy and paste and there we have it. Next up, you can use Canva to design your business card. Now you don't necessarily need to have it printed or a physical version. You can have a digital copy and then email it away. But by searching for business cards, you see all these templates. Here's one of the templates I open. This is the front of the business card and we've got the back of it. You can see one and two. You can easily edit this with your business name and your name as well as the address or anything else you'd like to add to your business card. Once you're ready to download it, simply hit the download button and save it as a PDF or save them as images. And you may notice there's a QR code, which is the next tip, how to create and generate QR codes. Canva's got a built-in QR code generator. If you simply go to canva.com forward slash apps, search for QR code, you'll see QR code right here. You can not only click on more while you're in your design, then you'll find QR code. From here, you'll see QR code. Enter the URL where you want people to go to after they scan your QR code. I've entered my website here and now I'll click on generate code. It's generated a QR code. What I'm gonna do is to scan it using my phone so you can see that it redirects to my URL. We'll start by opening my camera and now I'll point it at that. And as you can see, it says open aureliuschin.com. So I open that in Safari and there we go. Now you can see my website. To add this to your business card, all you really need to do is to select it, copy, head back to your business card design, and then we're gonna paste it right here and then drag it anywhere you want. So in this corner right here, resize it down, and there you have it. The next thing is printing on Canva. Let's use the business card as an example again. We can actually print this by clicking on print business cards. If you click the ellipsis, you're given more options at the bottom where it says print. We can print t-shirts, canvases, cards, postcards, and more. So we'll go ahead and print business cards. From here, select either single or double-sided. Since we've got two sides, the front and the back, we can select double-sided. And then select your printing options such as uh, premium paper, matte finish, and how many copies you'd like printed. Once you've set all that, simply continue and follow the rest of the steps. Another great use of Canva is to check out their library of logo templates. Simply search for logo and you'll see all these logo templates. The tip here is to use these templates as inspiration for your own logo or use it as a starting kind of foundation to design your logo. If you like a particular logo, click it and then you can start editing it. You can start editing the logo, changing the text to your business name. So instead of the designer, let's say your business name is called the creative, making sure that the spacing's right, including the letter spacing like so, and change anything else such as the background as well. Another great use of Canva is to design your invoice template. Simply search for invoice and you'll get a range of invoice templates. It's just a matter of opening one of them and then modifying and redesigning it the way you want. Replacing things such as the logo and of course the actual items. I use this quite frequently actually whenever I need to invoice a brand that I've worked with, a sponsor. For instance, we've got this template that I designed in Canva and all I need to do really is just change the amount. I've blurred out, of course, sensitive information, but once I'm done, all I need to do is just download it as a PDF and then send it off. Next up, you may have a special occasion or event coming up and for that, you can actually create invitations in Canva. Simply search for invitations and you'll see a range of invitation templates, or you can simply search and then choosing from landscape or portrait or these other themes. Not too long ago, my wife and I designed an invitation for our daughter's fourth birthday and we simply popped up one of these templates from Canva 
and then designed it from there rather than starting from scratch. So go check out some of their invitation templates. They all look pretty good in general. Another useful thing to try in Canva is to use Canva's Graph Maker. This is somewhat a hidden tool and I kind of found this by accident by going to design and then going to graphs. We can go here by typing canva.com forward slash graphs. Let's say I'm creating a graph for social media stats. So I've entered that in, click on create my graph now. It's going to ask you, do you need help choosing the right graph? I'll say no and just say, I know what graph I need. Let's select a traditional bar graph. Select from a number of templates. I'll choose the trend, this one right here. At first instance, you may think, oh, this is just another design. But in actual fact, if we click on the graph, on the actual graph. Now you see a table where you can actually input some data. So instead of 500, for instance, I will put in 1000, press enter, and now you will see it is now adjusted to 1000. Now, one of the most popular uses of Canva is to create social media graphics. For example, if you search for Instagram, we can search for Instagram posts, reels video, story, and other different categories. But let's say we want to design an Instagram story. We click on Instagram story and you get a range of different templates to use for your Instagram stories. Need some professional looking YouTube thumbnails? No problem. Simply search for YouTube thumbnails and you get a range of different YouTube thumbnails. An overlooked way of using Canva is to actually use it as a photo enhancer. Here's a photo that I uploaded, which looks quite flat. There's not much contrast and exposure. So what we can do is to edit this image in Canva. Click the image once and and then click on edit image. Now we can do the basics such as adjusting the brightness, contrast and saturation. First of all, let's add some contrast. This photo is quite dark, so I'll increase the brightness and that will expose more of the details. And let's just add a bit of saturation as you can see. Let's add a bit more color and vibrance to the image. And now you see here's the before and after. So quite a drastic difference. What you can also do is to use filters, photogenic or other tools that Canva provides here. All right, that pretty much wraps up this video. Hope you learned a new thing or two. Be sure to comment below which of these tips or uses is your favorite, or if you have any suggestions or extra tips or uses, be sure to comment them below too. Thanks so much for watching. And if you got value from this video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and looking forward to sharing the next training with you.